Hey everyone, Cooper here, host of the fine podcast you're listening to. I just want to let you know that the episode you clicked on has a format that is very heavily inspired by a podcast called The Bookening. To be clear, our thoughts and opinions in this episode are our own, but the format is very similar to this podcast. I just wanted to give you a heads up and give credit where it is due. With that out of the way, enjoy the show. Coming up next, Booking It Reads, The Telltale Heart. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Spookin' It! No, I'm kidding. Welcome back to Booking It. I'm, of course, your humble and eloquent host, Mr. Cooper Cobbs, and joining me today on this very special Halloween slash Harvest Day slash Reformation Day slash Free Candy Day slash whatever name you call it, the October 31st episode is me, myself, and I. Yes, unfortunately, today it is just me. I have to tell you guys, this episode has been through a lot already, okay? So first... You're like, let's do this book called Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury, the author of Fahrenheit 451. It's a book that I read, a book that I liked, that we'd all have fun talking about it. It comes down to it, Isaiah can't read it. Tanner didn't have time to read it. And so we're like, we probably should have done this earlier. We'll go ahead and switch it to The Telltale Heart. And don't worry, if you read it or wanted me to talk about it, I'll briefly talk about it today as well. But anyway, we switched it to The Telltale Heart because, hey, that's a famous story. It's, you know, related to October 31st being a horror story, um, and so we'll do that instead. Um, but then, on Wednesday, me and Tanner are supposed to record it, and then Tanner's like, oh crap, I forgot about that, and I have work, so gotta go, can we do it tomorrow? I'm like, sure. Then, as soon as I send that text message, I find out that I can't record t- that day because uh, I was going golfing, and just to be honest, golfing is not a normal experience for me. Like, it's not a thing, like, it's not, oh, I go golfing every weekend with my with my dad and my grandpa, and we go out every weekend and we play golf. It's, it's a, you know, it's not a normal, normal thing. So I didn't want to just, you know, throw away going golfing for, um, for recording. So I, I went golfing, and then I'm like, oh, wait, Tanner, I'm actually have time. I think I'm going to get back in time if you want to, um, record, because him, him and Isaiah were just going to do an episode, but then Tanner couldn't do it, Isaiah couldn't do it, it's just going to be me, so... Um, long, confusing story, but all that to say, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but today it is just me. But we're going to have a lot of fun because we're going to be talking about the horror genre. We're going to be talking about the Telltale Heart, Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to be talking about something wicked this way comes a little bit. It's going to be a fun episode. Just you, the the listener, and me, the podcaster in conversation together, except that it's a one-person conversation, unless you want to disagree with me and talk and yell while listening, which is totally fine. Do that, please. Engage with the podcast in however way you wish. Well, that all the way, let's talk about the Telltale Heart. Go ahead and give my baggage. So, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, probably a name that I've heard since, you know, since I was old enough to understand the you know, famous authors and hear their names and things like that. He's probably a name that I just heard thrown around a lot. And, um, you know, Poe or Edgar Allan Poe, or just his name just thrown around in discussion about literature. So I'd probably heard his name before. I hadn't read anything by him until uh, a couple of years ago. This was been eighth grade. Um, me, Matthew, Tanner, Isaiah, we all had to read the same short stories for our reading and writing class. And so one of the stories that we read in our Christian homeschool curriculum was The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, and uh, it's a story. It's definitely a story. And then the next year, we had to read The Pit and the Pendulum by one Mr. Edgar Allan Poe uh, as well. So uh, it turns out that we our Christian homeschool program wants us to read Edgar Allan Poe for some reason. So I read The Telltale Heart yeah, and The Pit and the Pendulum, and actually you can find um, a very early episode of this very podcast, episode 17, I believe, which is like 61 episodes ago, the very first episode of The Cooper and Matthew Show, in which we discuss The Pit and the Pendulum, and some of the things we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you want to listen to it, you can. It's a very early episode, so it's not, um, well, that good. Um, audio quality is not great, and just, you know, we're better at podcasting now than we were then, but you can listen to it if you want. It's a fun podcast, I think. But 
I just got introduced to Poe through CC and uh, through other mediums and through literature and, you know, became acquainted with the fact that he's a horror writer, he's a short story writer, he is a famous influential writer, and the fact that uh, he's very dark and depressing sometimes. So um, that's just kind of how I got introduced to Poe. And uh, yeah, it's my baggage with Poe and Telltale Heart and stuff like that. I know that many people I've talked to who have gone through the same program as us and have read the Telltale Heart are just like boggled by the, the short story that I'm talking about today. Like, why would we read Edgar Allan Poe? Like, why would we read this? It's such a weird story. Like, who would want to write this? And why would why are we forced to read this? And that's some of the questions that we're going to be answering, maybe asking. Uh, no, I said that in reverse order. My bad. Some of the, those are the questions that we're going to be asking, and some of them we're going to be answering today on the podcast. But first, I'd like to talk about the horror genre. So I know um, as Christians, sometimes when we hear that this movie is horror, this book is horror, or something like that, we automatically think, um, gut reaction, oh, it's bad, it's um, it's it's dark, we don't, we're not going to see that movie or read that book because it's horror. Like, why would we want to do that? And I understand that gut reaction. I do because I, I experienced that as well. Um, whenever like the new Halloween movie just came out, right? And it's obviously disgusting and it's a gross slasher movie that I'm never going to be tempted to see, hopefully. You know, like it's it's just so obviously disgusting and dark and depraved um, that that gets associated with the horror genre as a whole. And I think there is room um, in the horror genre. I don't think that the horror genre is just intrinsically bad and evil. Like, I don't think the Bible has any prohibitions about reading scary stories. Now, that said, obviously, we're not going to, like, read a scary book because it it's scary. And there's uh, no other—like, we shouldn't read books or watch movies that glorify bad things, that glorify demonic activity, that glorify— evil like we shouldn't just we shouldn't do that that's but that's that's what's wrong is glorifying that glorifying bad stuff not the portrayal of scary stuff so i think that there can be room for telling a good horror story like as humans one of our major emotions is the fact that we get afraid that we have fears and storytelling is a way to necessarily cope but like handle the themes of humanity and if fear is one of the major things that we experience, then why can't we have stories that pertain to that as well? So that being said, um, obviously horror lends itself to some very bad stuff, some very dark and depraved stuff, which is stuff that no Christian should probably read, right? But at the same time, horror is an essential emotion and should be tackled, I think, by storytelling. And sometimes, you know, the only way to tell certain stories is by telling them uh, in a scary way, like maybe the only way to tell a story about abortion is to tell a horror story. Sometimes the only way to tell a story about good conquering evil is to tell a horror story. And that's the book that we were going to read, uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I think it does a good job of wrestling with that. This evil comes into this town, and then these people have to stand up and fight against that evil. Because evil is gross and dark and disgusting, but it's we have to fight against it. So just portraying evil and just portraying the dark side of things um, is I, it's it's not there's nothing morally wrong against that as long as you're not portraying it as good, right? So we can portray evil and have good triumphing over evil in a horror story because that's how the world works and because that's how sometimes our experiences as humans play out. And also horror as the ability as a genre to tell important stories with important themes, similar to the sci-fi genre where some sci-fi books are, you know, warnings. Like if we pursue this technology, this could happen. If we do this thing, this could happen. Like we better not mess with stuff that we don't know. Like we have, we better not get into the moral implications of cloning or of genetic technology because it could doom our society. Like that's what sci-fi lends itself to is being a what's the, prophetic, prophetic in a sense, but also prophetic in a bad way. Like prophesying, like, prophesying in a way that is a warning, prophetic warning. I guess is the correct way to say that. Um, like also, honestly, Indiana Jones for a secular movie for being directed by um, 
a director who's not a Christian understands this as well. At the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Ark destroys all the bad guys, and Indiana or Indy and uh, I forget the the girl's name. They just they don't watch, they don't look because they don't want to mess with things higher than themselves, right? So that in that sense, sci-fi does a good job of that of saying we don't want to mess with these things because who knows what could happen, and we don't want to go there. We don't want to mess with things that we don't know about. In the same th- same way, horror genre can also lend itself to you don't want to get involved with the dark, with the demonic, with the depraved. You don't want to get involved with that. Here's here's a story about why that wouldn't work, right? Um, and I think that that's a that's a. I mean, obviously, we there's there's a, there is a line, and s- some books and movies do cross that line. But at the same time, we should be able to tell stories about people who fail, who have misgivings. I think the horror genre can be a way to portray people messing with p- things they don't understand. Like Frankenstein, one of the very first horror books I haven't read, but you know, it's about this person who, in his quest for designing an immortal being, creates a monster. And you shouldn't do that, <laughs> right? You shouldn't create monsters who go eventually go on to terrorize you and destroy everything you love. So in that sense, the horror genre is important because fear is an important human emotion and can be tackled by stories. And horror lends itself to prophetic warnings about things that we shouldn't get involved in stuff. Uh, in the same way that sci-fi does. A podcast that I've referenced a couple times on this podcast is Stories Are Soul Food by indie author Indy Wilson and editor Brian Cole. And one of the things that they talk about a lot is uh, C.S. Lewis, one of his major themes in his space trilogy, uh, which we've talked about, is that when you go deep into science and that when you dive deep into pursuing things that you shouldn't in science, such as immortality, such as things that we're not supposed to mess with, then you eventually go to the demonic. So in that sense, sci-fi and horror overlap. Like The genre of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror are so linked that they can overlap. And honestly, every fantasy story will have elements of horror. Every sci-fi story will have elements of horror. Every horror story will have elements of, can have elements of both fantasy and sci-fi. So they overlap, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, they're not distinct. But they overlap. All I'm trying to say about this is that horror genre isn't intrinsically bad. Like, when you say, this thing is horror, it shouldn't necessarily give you a gut reaction of, that means it's bad. Because horror is a legitimate genre, and it can be used to tell good stories. But at the same time, so many things in the horror genre are dark and depraved, and should never be engaged with by Christians, and should never have been created in the first place. But I just want to give space for someone telling um, a story about fear and about scary things, because as humans, we encounter that, and I think it's good to have stories that can help us overcome it all right well the telltale heart so uh, me and matthew way back when on our episode on poe on pit and the pendulum discussed the telltale heart and not until the heart we discussed poe and the fact that we were made to read the telltale heart and the fact that we were made to read poe we were just wondering like why what is the redeeming quality that our christian homeschool um, you know, curriculum one season, Edgar Allan Poe, who, as everybody is aware, is very dark and depressing and, you know, really weird author sometimes. And it's a very interesting question because there are a lot of interesting answers or could answer could be answers. I think first and foremost, he is very influential. And sometimes there are those things you read that even though they may not be good or they may not be um, enlightening, they're influential. And so you can see where things have come from. So Edgar Allan Poe is a pioneer in the short story form. Like he has our, actually, so our curriculum, the strand in which we read this was a literature section, but it was on short stories. And so we had to read Poe because he was the one who defined a short story, who codified it, and who, in some sense, perfected it, right? He said a short story should be read in, should be able to be read in one sitting, should have one theme, like all these things that have ones in them. He basically said, that's a short story. And so in a class about short stories, it's kind of hard to leave out the person who codified short stories into the conversation, in a sense, right? Because he was the one who came up with the terms and who, in a sense, popularized it and perfected it. So there is that. But at the same time, like people, like people, there have been influential books and movies that we shouldn't watch because they have bad stuff in them. So Poe isn't necessarily that all that redeemable because... There is not like a good message, really. I mean, Tesla Hart, I think that CC wanted us to take away our curriculum, CC, Classical Conversations, wanted us to take away 
the fact that guilt has consequences and that guilt will come back to bite you, which is true. That's a theme in the short story, the telltale heart that you could walk away with. The fact that, hey, maybe <laughs> it was just weird. Like, if you if you think you can get away with murder, well, you can't because your conscience will eventually eat you apart. Like the guy got away with murder, but then his conscience and his guilt eat him ate him apart. So there is that message you could draw from it, I suppose. I don't know why I need to tell this story to convey that message. Um, and the other reason is just his psychological depth and being able to inhabit a first person perspective well, because it's a very you're very inside you're you're very inside his head. Um, and I don't know if this is just Poe being really weird and being able to just do that. But other than that, he's very talented at getting inside someone's head, going through their emotions, and unfortunately, oftentimes going through their darkest <laughs> emotions. Maybe not unfortunately all the time, but you're getting a lot of their emotions and fears. Um, but he's very good at that. And so I think that it can be important if you're trying to write a short story. You're going to have a perspective. You better read the people who are really good at inhabiting other first person or third person perspective because it's important to know how to write perspective and poe is good at it he's good at getting inside people's heads it's good at writing in first person so there is that i suppose but other than that like it's really just a scary story written by a crazy man who's obviously very talented but other than that i don't know if i have that much to say about it because there's not all that much to say because it's influential yeah it's I guess it's good writing. He gets inside his people, his uh, characters' heads very well. Um, but it's really weird as well. So there's that. Um, I'm not sure. Like this, this is so outside what is a normal story that I don't know how to like rate this as as writing, as psychological depth, as as that goes, as technical craft goes. He's really good as a story goes. Um. I don't know. I don't. He's probably not because it's just a weird story about a character trying to get away with murder. Um, obviously, he's having a lot of fun. He's playing with the fact that the guy is trying to convince you he's not a madman. Well, calmly uh, and clearly, not calmly. He's trying to calmly explain to you why he's not a madman in the very opposite way. He's uh, illustrating how he's a madman. But at the same time, no idea how to really rate this story. Um, yeah. I mean, I think at some point, Everybody should probably read at least one post story just to kind of get in touch with the one of the most influential short story authors of the time, of time, not of the time, of time, of history, just to kind of see where he is. And also, if you're needing to get inside your character heads, Poe is good at that. Obviously, he's going to be bent towards the horror genre and towards um, the scary side of your emotions, but he is a good, good, good example of getting inside your character heads if you're writing. But other than that, there's, I mean, I'm not really going to, I'm not tempted to go read a lot of other post stories. I'm not tempted to go and, like, read anything else by Poe because it's just a strong flavor. And I only think I need that flavor every once in a while. But, hey, you could do, you could do worse. I'll just say that. I mean, Poe is obviously better than going to see the newest Halloween movie, so... Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that special Halloween episode by yours truly, Cooper Cobbs, on the Telltale Heart. We'll be seeing you guys next time with me and Tanner's discussion of a very opposite book to Telltale Heart, Emma, by Jane Austen. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about his pride and prejudice better than Emma, Mr. Knightley, Emma herself, the great Jane Austen. It's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you tune in next week. But real fast, before we go... Let's do some donor shoutouts. Now, Cooper, where would someone go if they wanted the donor shoutout? Well, I'm glad you asked. They would go to patreon.com forward slash booknet and donate to any of our tiers that are $5 and above. That'll get you a shoutout. And today we're going to be shouting out our patrons. I'm just going to run through the list. We love you guys. Nana, Vim Happy and Waylo, Mike and Laura, Jenny and Sam, Moses, Sarah, Anna, Emily, Becky, Lizzie, and Keenan. Thank you guys so much for donating. Really appreciate your support. We'll hopefully be seeing you guys next time on our M episodes. But until then, keep spooking it. No, I'm kidding. Keep on booking it.